Welcome. Today's project's all about the worst morning routine you can possibly have. I put together a list of a typical anxiety sufferer's uh, morning, and everything on this list is something I did. So it's pretty easy to figure out, and I base this list off of the, my clients as well, what they've been doing, what I see in other people, and how they start their mornings that really is contributing to the anxiety they feel throughout the day. Um, so the two most important times of your day is the morning, uh, the first hour after you wake up, and the hour before bed. I mean, before bed, it's it's good to get the body relaxed, get it into its rest and digest state so that you can have a proper sleep and when you get a proper sleep you feel better the next day it helps with your mental state but in the morning when you wake up a typical anxiety sufferer is bombarded with negative thoughts and then they react strongly to those negative thoughts and then those thoughts bleed out into the rest of their day now when i was going through my recovery what i would do is challenge those negative thoughts the guard up here, your rational guard, is just waking up because the body's waking up into consciousness. That guard is vulnerable to the negative thoughts. So it's good to get that rational voice, that voice inside your mind, active. So when I was going through my recovery, I would say, today's the day I challenge myself in my mind. Or you can say it out loud too, it helps as well. Um, today's the day I challenge myself. Today's the day I prove my old self wrong. And I would say that so I wouldn't let those negative thoughts the, the bombard me and I could... I'm already setting a name, right? Today's the day I prove my old self wrong. That's a name. I'm working hard. Today's a challenge. I'm working hard to, to prove that old anxious Brad wrong. So here's a list of... A typical anxiety sufferer's morning. This is these are the worst habits you can possibly do, and this altogether makes up the worst morning routine you can possibly have. Number one is you wake up at different times each and every day. This is not good. You need to regulate your body in a proper scheduled sleep because your circadian rhythm needs routine it needs the same uh time you go to bed and wake up time it needs the same time because there's a REM sleep portion of your sleep that comes near the end so if you wake up at eight o'clock one day and then you wake up at 10 uh p.m or sorry 10 p.m that's late man um if you wake up at 10 a.m the next day and then you wake up at 6 a.m. the next day, you, that 6 a.m. probably cut the whole REM part of your sleep right in half or out completely. And you need that REM. It regulates your body. It makes you more conscious, more mindful, more in tune with yourself, relaxed. It suppresses the anxiety system. So what is your sleep schedule like? And I always talk about this with my clients. I ask them, <clears throat> what's your sleep schedule like how much sleep are you getting because sleep is so important for anxiety recovery now if you're having trouble waking up at a set time each day say you want to wake up at 6 a.m every day and you feel exhausted it take a nap at noon this is something i did if your body's so tired by like 11 a.m you know Take a nap around noon o'clock, uh, noon o'clock, noon, and um, make it a power nap. Make it a nice half hour nap, and that'll help you kind of get your body feeling more relaxed and feeling more um, recharged is the better word. Uh, the second thing is you lie in bed all all morning right you don't even want to get up anxiety sufferers love to procrastinate anxiety sufferers avoid any real responsibility whenever they're met with resistance they back off right that's why a lot of people going through anxiety recovery fall back into their old behavior because they're met with that resistance and then 
they're like, oh my God, I can't do this. This is just too much. I'm already feeling chaotic already. How can I really face that thing ahead of me, right? The next thing is you look at your phone right away. This is a bad morning habit. I keep my phone in another room because I used to be a puppet of my phone, right? Uh, the phone was controlling me, not the other way around. Is the phone controlling you? Are you looking at, at your feed as soon as you wake up? The news feed, um, the, the likes you've gotten. And this is a great way to discipline yourself, right? You don't want to be a puppet of your phone. The phone is controlling you, isn't it? Well, have some control over it. And control is good. Anxiety sufferers need that control. They need some sort of discipline because their life is chaotic. And looking at that news feed, looking at, oh no, two people shot and got shot and died. It's like, First thing in the morning, that's going to affect you internally. That's going to affect your unconscious mind. If you're looking at the likes you've gotten, that's that's like filling up the voids in you. You know, the 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 you know, I got ten likes on this photo. It's it's filling up a a unnecessary need and want. Right? That's not good. So put the phone in another room. Wake up. Be in tune with yourself. Be with yourself in the morning. The next thing is you don't make your bed. You know, you get up, you throw the sheets off, and then you walk out of the room. The next thing, you call in sick. You know, you feel the sensations, you're bombarded with negative thoughts, you're wondering if this pain, this sensation is a serious illness. And you're like pacing back and forth. This is something I did. I paced back and forth wondering, oh, I can't go into work. How am I going to face my colleagues? How am I going to do the work today? I'm going to probably make a fool out of myself because I'm going to be so tired. I didn't get enough sleep. And I would pace back and forth and be like, okay, I got to call in, in sick. So then I would call in sick. And after that, I would feel bad. I'm like, I'm like avoiding that dragon of chaos. I know I should confront it deep down. That's why I feel like some sort of guilt and regret, right? I feel like... You know, I'm just avoiding avoiding that responsibility, avoiding that dragon, and it's just going to keep growing, right, if you avoid it. So afterwards, I would feel guilty. I would feel, you know, oh, man, I shouldn't have called in, but, you know, I can't because what if I got to go to the doctors or something because I just don't feel well, right? So I would call in sick. But if you don't call in sick, you might, an anxiety sufferer rushes around in the morning. They rush around. They try and gather their things. They brush their teeth. They don't give themselves enough time to prepare for work, prepare for school, whatever it is, appointments. They don't give themselves enough time in the morning. And so they don't give back to themselves. They're rushing. And when you rush around, you increase your anxiety system. Uh, you talk about your bad day to your family that's another habit uh are you talking about how crummy your day is going to be to family oh i don't know how i'm going to go into work today because i feel what if this sensation is an illness how am i going to confront the day you know so they talk about that with their family that's a bad habit the next one is you wait until morning to make difficult decisions that you need to make for that day so you wait until the morning. So when you wake up in the morning, you're bombarded with this, oh no, I have to decide whether to do this or this. And it's like you waited to the morning to do that. So you're using up so much mental energy just to make those decisions, those difficult decisions. And that's not good. Uh, next is you Google symptoms. Uh, are you waking up? Are you Googling your symptoms right away? Because that's not good. You're going to get the worst case scenario on Google and then that's going to increase your anxiety. That's going to activate your anxiety and your anxiety is going to rise up and then that's going to snowball into your day. And that's using up so much internal bodily, bodily resources. You're, you're just burning resources so quickly that, you know, by midday you're just going to be exhausted. So Googling symptoms is not good in the morning. And then you drink coffee. Drinking bucket loads of coffee just to wake up. I used to drink coffee in the morning, get that cream, get that sugar, and get that big coffee. 
and drink it just to wake up because I would feel exhausted. And little did I know, the coffee was just keeping my anxiety alive because your your body, uh, your adrenaline, your cortisol is up from your anxiety. The coffee just increases the stimulation and then it also increases the... Uh, the wall that you hit by like 11 a.m., right? It, it just increases the, the, the exhaustion that you'll experience midday. And so, as you can tell from this list, that this is very chaotic, isn't it? Everything in this list is chaos. And it's unorganized. Uh, everything in this list is, is, is unorganized. Uh, they, an anxiety sufferer feels lost, right? This is all chaos. But the opposite of chaos is order. And I always say to my clients, you need to add order into your day. Structure. People want structure. We want structure. Your body wants structure. So add order to the chaos. And you can tell by the state of someone's bedroom or their house or the front of their house or their backyard that... Uh, this what the state of their bedroom or house uh, correlates and represents their mental state. So if a person's very clean, a person has everything organized in their bedroom, they're they're more of a calm person. They're more grounded. They're more in tune with themselves. But if your room is chaos, your mental state is likely chaos. And I know this because I can see it in my clients, but I also see it from friends, from relatives. I can see from their room, the state of their house, that, you know, it's chaos, but I can see in them that they're depressed, that they're anxious. So the state of your room directly reflects the state of your mind. So pay attention to the state of your room as well. Now, I want to talk about, I made a list of successful people, successful role models that have a great morning routine. The first person, uh, Jennifer Aniston from Friends. Um, I love her. She's a great actress. I love Friends. Um, she has a great morning routine. She wakes up at 4.30 a.m. and she meditates. Great routine. Oprah, she gets up, she meditates. Tim Ferriss, and I love this one, he, he talks about he makes his bed. And I love this because he says here, the simple action of making his bed gives him a feeling of, uh, of pride and accomplishment. And he says here, the one thing, it's the one thing in his life that he has control over. So if there's anything in his life that he wants control over, it's just making his bed, just taking on that responsibility because it's a chore. No one wants to get up. They're feeling tired. Oh, now I got to do all this and pull the sheets over and tuck sheets in and fluff the pillows. And, you know, that's just a responsibility, but it's a, it's a great responsibility. It adds discipline. It adds uh, some order to your day. It adds uh, the feeling of accomplishment. At least I did that thing today. It's really powerful. I love that one. Um, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, I love his morning routine. He he wants to eliminate choices in his morning. And so he has 20 t-shirts of the same color in his closet. So he just puts on the t-shirt. He doesn't spend time thinking about what to wear. That's using up mental energy. So he believes to have all of these t-shirts of the same color he just puts them on and then he goes about his day so he elim eliminates decisions and that's why on the list here i put um an anxiety sufferer uh waits until morning to make difficult decisions it's not good to wait until morning it's good to sort them out maybe the day before write a list of what you need to do sort it out the night before so that in the morning you don't have to think about it you can just do your morning routine and not waste so much mental energy. You can use it on other things, right? So 
Another role model is uh, Russell Brand. He meditates. He exercises. I love his morning routine. It's just as simple as that. Exercising, eating right, meditation, excellent. Uh, Tony Robbins. Now, I love his morning routine. He calls his morning routine priming. So in his priming morning routine, he does deep breathing and it's followed by visual visualizations of what he's grateful for. So he goes over in his mind things that he's grateful for and then he visualizes three things he wants to accomplish. Now, if you've been following me, I talk about the morning meditation or the morning manifestation exercise that is so important for each and every day is when you sit and meditate, you visualize how you want the day to go from morning until night. This speaks directly to the unconscious mind. This is something that unconsciously manifests itself throughout the day. You're setting an aim because remember before anxiety sufferers are in chaos they need order. They need an aim. They need some sort of goal. What is the purpose? What am I aiming for today? Today's the day I prove my old self wrong. Today's the day I challenge myself. Today's a challenge. Today's a challenge. Now, my morning routine, I get up. I make my bed. I go write in a journal for five minutes. And I'll put a link in the description of of what I write in my journal, um, a video on that in the description below. Um, so after I write in my journal, I will meditate. I'll do the manifestation uh, movie exercise in the morning. And then after, I'll stretch for 10 minutes. And that's my morning routine. It get, gets me grounded. It gets me centered. I know my aim for the day. I set a goal for the day. I know I want what I want to accomplish because I have a planner on my wall. I have a weekly planner of each and every day what I really need to do. Today's Today I do the video from my channel. The next day, the podcast episode. And then the next day, um, blog post. The next day, uh, I have to get groceries and I make a list of things that I need to do. So what is your schedule like? And more importantly, what is your morning routine like? Watch the video over and over again and adopt a powerful morning routine. Get into a rhythm. Get into a cycle. And you'll find after a month that things have gotten better. And that's where I'm going to leave you on this uh, video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And remember, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next video. Bye for now. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell so that whenever a new video of mine appears, you will be the first to know. Namaste.